After getting the plans drawn up for the house I wanted to build, I wanted to keep it aesthetically clean. I didn't want a propane tank out in the yard or air conditioning units sitting outside the house. So I went to a lot of trouble to put air conditioners on the roof, bury the propane tank, and nothing is visible. No appliances are visible on the outside of the house. The thing about steel is when it's exposed to oxygen and water, it rusts and corrodes. And marine engines are a perfect example of this happening. As you can see here on my boat, I have zinc anodes attached to the outside and they're sacrificial. They erode before the rust gets to the motor. And I've replaced these a couple of times uh, my engine is 23 years old, and there's not a spot of rust on it anywhere. This is it, 23-year-old engine. Here are zinc anodes from an RV hot water heater. The one on the bottom has been sacrificed, but saved the steel in the heater. Well, guess what propane tanks are made of? steel. One day I got a knock on my door and it was my propane supplier offering me a free complimentary test to make sure I was getting adequate cathodic protection on my tank. He used a multimeter and a copper sulfate cell to get a reading between the tank and the dirt and it failed. I got a 0.25 reading and on the chart here on the bad reading side you can see that's pretty low. So he red tagged my tank and I cannot get propane until I fix the problem. He said their company could do the work and fix it. The 17 pound magnesium anode required for my tank would be $600, $125 hourly each for two guys to hand dig it. And I asked if I could do the work myself. And he said, yes, you can. So I started digging. He also said that we were going to have to find the old anode bag and prove that it was not fused to the tank. And so we followed the wire and finally found it down pretty deep at the end of the tank. It appeared to be about maybe halfway used up. So I began shopping for an anode bag to get a cheaper price and I finally found one from a local guy for $219. I found the steel bar inside the old anode and attached a wire to it to see if I could get a little extra protection. We cleaned up the copper lug, uh, greased it up, and bolted it back to the ground block on the tank.
we put both anodes down in the hole, attached the wires to the ground block on the tank, watered down everything good, and going to call for a retest. So the next step was to disconnect the anode and check just the anode. And when we pulled the wire off the tank, we got a good reading. It was perfect. As soon as we touched the wire back to the tank, it would fail. It just didn't make any sense. It was like the 17 pound anode was not big enough to protect the tank or perhaps it was trying to protect more than the tank and that's when I remembered I had piped all the gas pipe in iron to the house and the rest of the gas pipe is all metal. I began to suspect that the pipe and the tank were all connected together, running through the whole house with no dielectric separation. And I began looking for a dielectric union and could not find one. This is a dielectric union. The two pipes connect here. And when you take it apart, you have a rubber seal which keeps the gases or liquid from leaking. And then you have this part right here. And this is the part that keeps the two metal pieces from touching each other and isolates the metal from the metal. I looked and looked all over uh, the piping connections that went from the tank to the house and inside the house. Uh, here's the shutoff uh, that comes up out of the ground. It goes into the house. There was just no easy way to install a dielectric union. And so I began looking out near the tank to see if I could find a better option. I looked in the cap uh, with the pipes standing above the tank and on the left side I found the regulator. I probably could have taken that off and put uh, uh, the dielectric union on top. It would have stood a little higher and then I remembered seeing something online that looked just like that little quarter inch tubing, flexible tubing that's attached from the high pressure side on the right to the low pressure regulator on the left. I went back online and I was able to find that pigtail and sure enough it had a dielectric union built into it and so I put it in my shopping cart and ordered it. Propane, um, acetylene, peroxyacetylene, most of your flammable gases, do it backwards. It's lefty tighty, righty loosey. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Okay, so you videoing? Yeah. And my voice is on there? Oh, that's hideous. I even went the wrong way trying to <laughs> get it off by hand. So he said it doesn't matter which end the dielectric goes to. Okay. I didn't think it would, but... Good come out of here Up. and go like this. Okay. Maybe it's... kind of take it a little off to the side so you can still get to your...
I was pretty confident that I had found the problem, and so I called for another test. And he came out, and it passed with flying colors with the wire attached to the tank. And he removed the red tag, and I ordered the truck to fill my tank with propane. It's just a guess, but by doing it myself, I probably saved a couple thousand dollars. And of course, I had help from my buddy and my son. Thank you.